UC San Diego's Stephen Mayfield is one of the world's leading algae researchers, but he's also a kind of farmer, and right now his crops are in a greenhouse. So they need sunlight, they need CO2, and they need nutrients. By growing and studying algae for almost three decades, Mayfield has helped discover all kinds of incredible uses for this slimy little organism. Maybe the most promising, fuel. Cultivate algae properly and it'll produce an oil that can be refined and dropped right into your car's gas tank. We know that we can grow algae. We know that we can extract oil from it. And the beauty of algae is that it feeds on the CO2 emitted by burning fossil fuels. It's a carbon neutral system. We've flown jet aircraft on the fuel. We've driven boats on the fuel, cars, you name it. So scientifically, it's a done deal. What the issue is now is economics. But economics is no small issue for the companies trying to commercialize algae-based fuel. It's been more challenging, I think, than many people assumed, uh, in part because a lot of this is based on really the, the brutality of the marketplace. That's Martin Sabarsky, CEO of a San Diego-based algae company called Solana. He says back in 2008, algae companies trained their sites on fuel because oil prices were skyrocketing. There was an expectation that prices would keep going up, and it's really leveled off or gone down since 2008. With oil prices down, pressure has eased on finding alternative fuel sources. Companies that have kept fuel only as their business model are kind of the minority now. You've seen a larger number of companies that had fuel, biofuels or energy or petroleum in their names, and they've gone so far as to take that out of the, their name. Like, for instance, Sabarsky's own company. Solana's old name was HR Biopetroleum. But then a big deal between Solana and oil giant Shell fell through. Sabarsky and his colleagues opted for a more neutral name. Now, Solana focuses on turning algae into livestock feed and omega-3 supplements. And this right here is uh, sort of lovingly referred to as liquid gold. They figure people will pay more for a bottle of pills than they will for a gallon of gas. I don't believe you're going to find any algae companies that are going to hang their hat on energy. Mike Mendez helped found another San Diego-based algae company, Sapphire Energy. But after 2008, he couldn't see algae-based fuels path to profitability, so he left to launch another biotech company. He says the energy market had changed dramatically. The number one factor um, is fracking. Fracking has changed the landscape. Fracking involves injecting fluids into the ground at high pressure. It's being used to extract lots of new natural gas, and it's happening within U.S. borders. Politicians worried we'd never be energy independent without alternative fuel sources. But now, in 2014, imports are at a 20-year low. We're approaching energy independence, and fracking is getting us there. Algae just doesn't look so urgent anymore. We were making a product that had to be made cheaper than bottled water. And, and with that is a whole set of headaches. The, the things that, that have stalled it were just out of our hands. But Jim Lane, the publisher of Biofuels Digest, says the algae industry hasn't given up on fuels. As he sees it, algae is just going through a normal, if awkward, growth phase. Every new technology will start out serving small needs uh, for niche consumers who often will pay a very, very high premium. And I think it's a mistake to look at things getting into business and finding a business and making a profit and getting, you know, jobs going and getting industrial uh, base going as a diversion. It's a necessary first step. Still, that makes the story of algae a bit ironic. In 2008, it seemed poised to replace fossil fuels. Now, one of the biggest algae companies is making a drilling lubricant used to extract even more fossil fuels. Designed so customers can drill faster, straighter, and cleaner. David Wagner, KPBS News.